Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and Shabbat Shalom for those of you who like to keep Saturday Sabbath, as Jesus did. Okay, which doesn't mean we have to, but he did because he was Jewish. Okay, having said that, I'm going to move on to something. Somebody pointed out to me, now I knew the wildfires in California were the worst ever. Now, this report has just come out. And I was going to just share the video, like try to download it and re-upload it. But I'm going to read it to you myself and throw in a couple of my own thoughts. Because although it may be 100% true, listen to how it reads. Okay, let me just pull it forward. I'm going to learn. I've got myself a note, wherever it is. Check into screen share. I want to look into programs. I want to figure out how it is that people show what this guy's showing, like he's doing. I'm seeing the article, not him reading it. I see the article. How does he do that? If anyone could help me with that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Because I thought, you know, y'all might want to read it while I'm reading it. Anyway, I'm going to pull it forward and read it and throw in some of my own thoughts here all right I have to blow it up and it says it's an article it starts out um, the agents have been given autonomous wait, power and a light back it one up. Mike from Nibiru news and someone's bones .com here I won't take too much Mike from Nibiru news that is the channel who shared this article all right um, I was trying to see if he show the top of it well I'll find out what this publication is okay it says late Tuesday night Tuesday all right this is Saturday and the date of this video is let's see when he put this out August 10th today is August 11th so this is Saturday 11th this was done on Tuesday night this was put up yesterday all right just to get the date straight all right, late Tuesday night, a squad of FEMA senior internment specialists. All right, that's what they call the concentration camps. Internment, uh, their internment housing. All right, senior, uh, fe let me start over. Late Tuesday night, a squad of FEMA senior internment specialists from Washington secretly departed Andrews Air Force Base bound for the wild fire raised countryside of Northern California where the largest fire in the state's history has already claimed a dozen lives I'm surprised it's not more than that smoke inhalation can kill you in a minute not really a minute it takes hours but it It'll get to you. Displaced thousands and singed over 283,000 acres of land. Well, if you look at the pictures of these fires, you can clearly see that the homes are being lasered right out of their neighborhoods. And the trees are being left intact. I find that odd, don't you? Never in history has there been a forest fire that came over a hill and burned up the whole countryside, burned up the homes, and left the trees. Don't you find that odd? I do. All right. So, where was I? All right. Our source, a high-ranking FEMA agent speaking under condition of anonymity, said the eight-man death squad left D.C. with orders to train regional supervisors on proper interrogation and internment tactics. Okay, first of all, anyone having anything to do with internment has already been trained. They've been working on this for years. Okay, I'm not telling you I'm not just saying that this is totally not true it just sounds a little bit like 
fear-mongering propaganda, but let me continue. The FEMA team, he added, arrived on Wednesday near Redding, California, and began teaching local federal emergency management agency employees how to trick, wheedle, and cajole, cajole indigent Californians into believing the government aims to help in times of crisis. Indigent. So are you telling me this huge largest fire ever is only affecting the indigent or maybe the people with money were able to get into their cars and drive to hotels. The lesser well-off who lived in the poorer neighborhoods didn't have such a choice. Perhaps they're living out of their cars. Then they would be the indigent now, wouldn't they? According to some. Many people live week to week. They may have a nice house. But it's taken all they earn to keep that nice house up. Even with swimming pools. But now they're living out of their car because they don't have a savings account or a credit card high enough to put them in a hotel because it's maxed out from decorating their house. You see where I'm going? It could very well be true. But this article is just calling them indigent because they're living out of their cars. I'm just thinking out loud here. All right. This is where we get into trouble living above our means where it takes every dime. It does for me. That's where I'm at. I'm on a month to month. I have not been saving because I keep thinking Jesus is coming. Okay? That's my my thing. I could have been setting aside 50 back when I was getting the move-in discount before they took it away from me. Instead of helping people, I could have been sticking some money back. But I, I just, I, I, I can't do that. Anyway, it's not about me. Let's move on. So I choose to live month to month. Uh... Cajole indigent Californians into believing the government aims to help in times of crisis. The reality, however, is quite the opposite. The agents have been given autonomous power and a license, if needed, to kill, our source said. They project themselves as benevolent overlords showing up with food, resources, shelter, and other amenities which the impoverished graciously accept. Once FEMA hooks them in and has them wanting more, they reel them in. People are told, if you want more, you need to come with us. And then herded, onto FEMA cattle cars and taken to the nearest FEMA camp. Those who refuse are intimidated and often find themselves staring down the barrel of an AR-15. I would like to see some pictures of that. Agents, he said, were given explicit instructions. Lure unsuspecting victims into FEMA's open arms. So they found eight willing persons to train to do this. Lure unsuspecting victims into FEMA's open arms. Currently, there are 23 aid stations and rescue centers near the perimeter of the car 
wildfires, C-A-R-R. FEMA agents will systematically commandeer those locations and tell rescue workers that harboring victims, many of whom could be felons or illegal immigrants, is a clear violation of the Patriot Act and that culpable persons would be subject to detainment and arrest without the benefit of jurisprudence. Yeah, that Patriot Act, which was signed by George Bush on September 11th, 2001, allows our government to arrest you and detain you without jurisprudence, without getting your one phone call to even get a lawyer, without calling even a relative to tell them you're okay or have been arrested by FEMA. My gut is telling me this is true. Okay, I'll continue. Most people at the rescue stations don't really know the law, so they just leave fearing they'll be imprisoned. These are people working the rescue stations. All right, let me see if I can move this ahead. Benevolent overlords showing up with food, resources, shelter, or said will systematically commandeer those dressed as Red Cross volunteers aboard sweltering buses and taken to FEMA camps. The FEMA security squads, he said, have been granted broad discretionary powers and are immu an immunity against prosecution. Hold on. He's reading beyond where I'm seeing, so let me back up and we'll listen to him. Oh, okay, I see, I see where Red he's Red Cross at. volunteers, okay. they're fearing they'll be imprisoned. That's where I ended. Plain-clothed FEMA agents, or the, even those dressed as Red Cross volunteers, then commandeer the locations and offer wayward souls a warm bowl of rancid soup and some blankets to sleep on. Once the building is filled to capacity, FEMA locks the doors and armed agents prevent anyone from leaving, ostensibly for their own safety. After a night's sleep of being lulled into a false sense of security, their cell phones and digital media are confiscated as they're herded like cattle aboard sweltering buses and taken to FEMA camps. The FEMA security squads, he said, have been granted broad discretionary powers and are immu an immunity against prosecution. In times of natural or man-made disasters, FEMA is the ultimate authority. Quoting him again, FEMA can arrest anyone at any time for any reason or for no reason. Even local law enforcement bends to FEMA's will. If some chivalrous cop tries to side with the public, he risks being interned or killed himself. That's how much power FEMA has. And agents are under tremendous pressure to meet goals, our source said. FEMA internment specialists are obligated to meet quotas. To meet goals. Quotas. Okay, we'll continue. Much the way a state trooper is expected to issue a given number of speeding citations each month. In FEMA, however, an agent's worth is based on how many people per crisis he can willingly or forcibly convince to visit the nearest FEMA camp. In closing, our source says the following. Like what we did during Hurricane Harvey and in Hawaii, this will just be another beta test in advance of an eventual declaration of martial law. And that concludes the short article I wanted to read. Again, if you appreciate this channel, the articles, the live shows, anything we do here in the effort we put out, please consider making a small PayPal donation. The link is on our website, uh, someonesbones.com. All money goes back to helping the channel. And independent media is under attack these days, so we do need all the help we can get. Please like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and alternate... Alternative methods of donating are listed in the description box below. I'll see you. Okay, I'll stop it there. Yeah, I have a feeling that some a lot of this stuff that makes these really cool videos is you have to pay for it.
And now I understand why a lot of them ask for money. Otherwise, all you get is what you get, like, from me, because it's free. I mean, I don't have to pay any money to download video at little video clips, and a lot of that you have to pay for. Excuse me. Um, so what do you think? This is from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Oh, I'm sorry. He, this is him talking. Let's see. I'm trying to see if he's got... No, this is just all how to donate and... Um, callers, okay, talking about callers, no caps, use of sentences or paragraphs in capital letters is reserved for moderators making channel announcements. Okay, there is not even a link to this article, and when I back it all the way to the beginning of it, I can't see where this is at. Where is this newspaper or a newspaper? Who reads a newspaper? These people around here still do, but I can't tell what this article is. So you can uh, search it out yourself if you'd like. I put it out there. I believe it. It could very well be true. And um, I don't know how to prove it or disprove it because there's no source noted. And that is from Nibiru News. That's the channel. All right. God bless you all. I plead the blood of Jesus over this. I pray for the victims who don't have any money to go to somewhere else. Stay with a relative. Really. Because they don't know God, don't trust Him, they go run to the little shelters. Oh, let's stay here, honey, it's closer. Aunt Betty is another hundred miles. Let's just stay here, just for the night. Get reeled in and sucked up by FEMA, because they don't know any better. Oh, the government would never harm us? Well, I heard Mr. So-and-so talk. Oh, come on, you don't believe him. People are ignorant. It could very well be true. It could very well be happening right under our noses. Let's pray for the victims and pray that somehow somebody gets the word out about Jesus Christ in the FEMA camp. It won't be easy. I read one of the pages my daughter found way back, way back when the FEMA internment camp rule book came out. It was like a thousand pages. She found a page 800 or something where they were instructed to stuff a soft rag in their mouth if they were caught talking. You can't even hum. They can shoot you if you refuse. You can't even sit there and no, that won't be allowed. The day is here. I believe Jesus is coming soon because just look around. This, these fires are so not natural. You can do a search in the search bar. California wildfires. This one's the car fire. C-A-R-R. -R. Look at some of the pictures. I'll try to find one and link one. Okay? You can see one where it was lasered right down the middle. Half the house standing in perfect. This half is disintegrated. It's like they lasered it from above. Cut a square out and then went inward. Why'd they do that? Just to show us, look what we can do. That's what I think. What do you think? Why would they do it that way? Why would they leave half a house? Do you really think people are ignorant enough to believe a natural fire did that? 
Does anybody's house ever burn right? I'm talking a straight line down the roofing. That house, that ha half was gone. This was a ritzy neighborhood. I mean, these were nice homes, not mansions, not that high class, like, like uh, a nice suburb kind of place. Nice. Anyway, I'm gonna it here. It's 20 minutes. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and over each and every one of you. Be telling people, please be telling people, share this video if you want. If you want to do more research, try to find this article, share it with us. I'd like to know the source. All right. I may even write this little person, um, I think I'll leave a comment and ask him, what's your source? Okay. Bye for now. Have a wonderful weekend. Be blessed in the Lord this day. I'll talk to you later.